Council members could come to the dais, please. I'd like to call to order the council meeting of um, December uh, 16th. If the clerk could please read the roll. Councilmember Dunbar. Councilmember Garza. Here. Councilmember Hussein. Here. Councilmember Jackson. Here. Councilmember Spadafore. Here. Councilmember Spitzley. Here. Councilmember Washington. Here. Councilmember Wood. Here. There are eight members present at quorum. At this time, um, we will have a meditation and the Pledge to Allegiance. Um, if we could remember John Decker and his family in our prayers, John um, was at the city market and owner of Hickory Corners um, for a number of years and he passed away. So if we could remember John, council member um, uh, uh, Jackson. Thank you. If we could remember Kimberly Stump, she passed away um, recently. She had a huge heart, a longtime Lansing resident, went off and did some modeling, um, huge caretaker. And she was my first babysitter, but, and also a great neighbor and truly missed. Thank you. And lastly, if we could remember um, Barbara King, um, she was a uh, volunteer who uh, was in the foster grandparent program at um, two of our schools, and she just recently passed away, so if we could remember her. With that, if we could please rise. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag We are to um, comments by council members and the city clerk. All right, we uh, have uh, comments by council members and the city clerk. Any comments? Uh, Vice President Spadafore. I would like to approve the printed council proceedings from December 2nd. Do I have those up? I, I don't believe they don't got printed they off. Oh, so. all right. Then I would withdraw my approval of the okay. non-printed <laughs> council proceedings. All right, that's fine. Are there council member comments? Seeing none, uh, that would take us right. to the clerk. Um, thank you. Um, I do just want to say uh, we have an election coming. Uh, March 10th is the presidential primary. Um, and uh, at this point, we are... Um, looking like we would need some additional election workers. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please go to my website, lansingmi.gov slash clerk. Um, it is a paid position, so uh, sign up. Uh, we will provide you training and uh, sign you a specific location. Um, so uh, it's fun, you get to work with folks, you get to see members of your community, and you get to assist us and get paid. So. It's a win-win-win. Um, I also want to mention uh, he's not going to be our regular council intern, but with us tonight we have Eddie Wall. Um, he is with my office and working on doing a lot of uh, voter outreach in the coming year, uh, working on voter registration um, and different events. So if there's anyone out there um, in the, uh, that has a, uh, an organization that would like to have a voter registration event, you can contact my office. At, 483-4131. Uh, we'd love to come out. Uh, we can do mock voting for kids or adults or both. 
um, and uh, we can uh, get people registered uh, and and provide information about uh, how to vote and all that kind of stuff. So with that, we are to community event announcements. If you have a community event, we'll give you one minute to tell us the details. Is there are any community events? I yes, that's you. Come up, Paula. Then <laughs> 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 a helper, so Okay, so my name is Paula Simon, and I live in Lansing, and our event is the Antioch, oh, I'm so excited, Antioch Full Gospel Baptist Church is having its Christmas concert this Saturday, December the 21st, and it is from 5 o'clock until 7.30. We will be giving away toys to the children and some good finger food, but most of all, a lot of good singing. So come on down and join us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other community events? All right, then uh, uh, I'll announce the closing, the collecting of the speaker registration <coughs> sign-in for legislative matters. That's the blue sheet in the back. And if you're wishing to speak on any of the um, items that the city council will be acting on tonight, uh, you need to sign in as we're collecting that. And uh, we are now to the mayor's comments. Ms. Harkin. Just a couple of things. There is a Lansing Saved Super happening this evening. It's happening right now. Actually, I started at 630 at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in the Baker neighborhood. So if you are here and looking to do something different or you're watching at home and you think that would be a fun event, you can head over there. And we will also have four. We just finished up our participatory budget evenings last week, and we will have four more in the coming year, which we will be, we'll be announcing right after the first of the year, so you can be on the lookout for those. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then we are to public comment on legislative matters. So it doesn't include any uh, public hearings, but it does include the action items on the agenda. So our first speaker is Randy Dykhouse, followed by Loretta Stanaway. Hi, I'm Randy Dykhouse, uh, fourth ward representative, 418 North Sycamore. And I'm here to uh, make comment on the climate action plan contract that's on your agenda. And I'd just like to say that it's uh, frustrating to see this plan kick down the road yet again. Uh, it's important work, it's really important work. And it's up to municipalities to pick up uh, where, because the federal government has basically abdicated its responsibility for anything related to climate action. And it's up to us here at the local level to, to work on something that has an ex existential uh, potential for existentially affecting all of us. And I realize it's down the road a piece. Uh, and that's part of the problem with this issue. But it needs action now. And I'm here to really urge that we get this done and get it done now with this extended contract no later than February 28th. I think it also uh, speaks to the need for some kind of a sustainability coordinator or somebody within the city government whose purview it is to take care of sustainability and environmental uh, uh, issues. Um, when it's decentralized and everybody's responsible, that really means nobody's responsible. Everybody who works for city government is up to their eyebrows and ready with things to do. And this is, and adding one more thing that may not be on their annual evaluation means that it probably isn't going to get done in a timely manner. We need somebody who can uh, can track the issue, who can do it as their, his or her job. Uh, and that needs to be done ASAP. Um, finally, I'd like to advocate for the formation of an, a Citizens Environmental Commission or Citizens Environmental Board uh, that is made up of Lansing residents who can advise the council and the administration on all issues related to sustainability and environmental action. That's my plea. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, we have Loretta Stanaway and then Deborah Mulcahy. Okay, briefly on the public safety uh, item about reappointing Tim Barron to the media representative position for Ingham County in the city of Lansing. I would support that effort. Um, I know there's been some play in the media about issues between um, another candidate for a different position in the county and, um, and Tim. 
And just in my own personal opinion, the things that the other person, I think his name was Dan Ross, uh, was alleged to have said or done to me seemed a lot more egregious than what Tim Barron was alleged to have said or done. And if you're going to back the one, I think you should be backing the other. Um, overnight parking, I support that. I think that you guys have done a tremendous job over the many years that it's been a topic of consideration. I would suggest that there be some room in the future for looking at a possible phraseology of some kind that would grant the possibility for exemptions to be made as needed. Uh, for instance, if somebody has an in-home caregiver who comes and goes and isn't there every day but is there several days a week and they're overnight shifts, I think there needs to be some way to make an exemption for a person in that sort of a capacity. Um, I support the acquisition of the land for the parks. Two of the three of those are basically just housekeeping type, cleaning up border sort of issues. The third one, the acquisition for Hunters Ridge and Fulton and Fine, I think is going to be uh, a common sense solution to a different sort of a situation and is also worth supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and our final speaker is Deborah Mulcahy. Good evening, I'm Deborah Mulcahy and I reside on South Genesee Drive. My comments tonight are provided in regard to Agenda 3B, fees, and the ordinance uh, issue Agenda 4F on street parking. Regardless of my opinion in which I think you are all misguided in allowing for on-street parking between two and five, which will in essence allow 24 seven parking on our city streets 365 days a year with an annual permit, I believe that the charges that you assess for those permits should be actually reflective of what it will cost to issue the permit and the associated fees. As to the ordinance, my prior comments to this council and to the committee stand. It was only last year that this council authorized on-street parking in the downtown area. The city's been unable to figure out how to implement that, and now we are determining to allow on-street parking throughout the entire city. Why? Who benefits? This woman brought up an example of a specific situation, and there are valid situations when those types of things occur, but what is the real reality of what's happening? I've asked for documentation. I have not seen any. I feel this issue has been sanitized. If you look at the December 5th, 2019 minutes from the Public Safety Committee, which I spoke at at length and gave specific details, you will not see my name or my comments. The issue of having too many cars for your lot is a common issue for lots of people. Most neighbors work it out themselves. I see this as being politically driven. I feel that you, the city, and your positions have failed to recognize the fact that our roads are for driving and for bicycles. Roads are not designated parking lots. Visibility in neighborhoods is key. It's a safety issue. How do you expect our public service employees to maintain our roads when vehicles are parked 24-7? I think you're making their job more difficult. The language in the ordinance fails to provide criteria. It creates subjectivity. You have failed to tell the public when permits will be allowed. It's not fair to the public. It's not fair to the residents. I can't get in my garage because I have a 60-foot RV sitting in front of my garage and it takes up the space in my driveway. Does that mean I get a parking space out on the road? Doesn't tell us. I think you're setting up staff to be considered arbitrary and capricious and I think that's wrong. As to enforcement, historically when the non-officer issued 1,000 citations a month for a three-month period, that became politically unacceptable to Mr. Bonero, our then mayor. What's gonna happen going forward? I believe that if you're going to have an ordinance provision that says, as Ms. Woods told us on December 5th at the Committee of the Whole, that there's a commitment from this administration to have enforcement, then you should have it in the ordinance. I believe, again, we all own the roads, and you are giving public land to specific individuals. Let them pay the cost. You are making a change in which some of you will not be directly impacted at your home. You're not gonna hear those slamming of doors or car alarms to wake you up. The mission statement that you all agreed to uphold includes promoting a safe and healthy neighborhood. How any of you can honestly say that the allowances of vehicles parked in our right of way 24 seven is for our safety. Thank I respectfully you. request a better review of this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are to the consent agenda. Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, I'm going to pull everything but items 1A, 3A, 
and 5B. Those are the confirmation of reappointment for Marcy Ailing for the at-large member of the Board of Zoning Appeals, com report, reappointment of Tim Barron as a media representative of the Ingham County City of Lansing Community Corrections Advisory Board, and the settlement of a workers' compensation claim. Okay. I move the consent agenda. Move the consent agenda with those items on it. All those in favor of the consent agenda? We have the number one, which is um, the reappointments on the planning board. Number um, three um, A, which is the denial of the appointment, and number um, five B, which is the approval of the uh, workers' comp. Okay, Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. So. I just want to be clear, 3A is denial. Correct. All right, thank you. All right, Council Member Washington. Never mind. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye, opposed. Uh, we have two um, opposing, all right? Then we um, are to the pass. Committee on Development and Planning. The first resolution we have before us uh, is the intent to establish Lansing Gateway Corridor Improvement Authority in the designation of the development area. Uh, we had two public hearings earlier in the year, uh, one September 23rd uh, and another October 14th. The reason for the two public hearings is that uh, the September 23rd public hearing uh, was not noticed correctly. I shouldn't say not noticed correctly, but we, fr we failed to put in the address uh, of the public hearing. Uh, we, again, we did have two public hearings. Uh, with regards to the first, with uh, the intention to create the Lansing Gateway Corridor Improvement Authority, uh, the proposed development area is North Grand River from Frenette Road to Old US 27 on East, East North Street with branches on North MLK, Turner, and Capital City Boulevard. So this would include all commercial properties found within 500 feet, both north and south of the center line of those roads. Um, it's been determined that the development area meets all requirements pursuant to the Michigan Corridor Improvement Authority Act. Uh, and it should be noted that the city's master plan does call for specific improvements on Grand River. Um, you guys kind of know the process at this point. Obviously, we dealt with two other corridor improvement authorities uh, this year. We actually approved uh, both development and TIF plans for those respective corridor improvement authorities. This is the first process. We know that, uh, and we talked a little bit about this today in development and planning. We know that it took 10 years uh, to get us from the actual establishment of the, the first two corridor improvement authorities, which were from Michigan Avenue as well as Saginaw Street, to the place where we actually had development and TIF plans. Uh, we are certainly hoping uh, that because of our work through uh, those two respective processes that we um, get to the, those development plans and, and get to vet uh, proposed TIF plans much sooner uh, than 10 years out because these are critical corridors uh, that really need uh, some rejuvenation and, and new life, um, if you will. So with that being said, I would move the resolution uh, to establish the Lansing Gateway Corridor Improvement Authority. All right, we have a motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Council Member Hussein. The next resolution uh, deals with the establishment of the South Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard Corridor Improvement Authority and the designation of the development area. Uh, the proposed development area, um, it begins about 500 feet uh, south of Victor, that's at the railroad track south of Victor, and extends all the way to I-96. This would include all commercial property found within 500 feet, uh, north and south of the center line of South MLK. Uh, again, the development area does meet all requirements pursuant to the Michigan Corridor Improvement Act. Uh, again, public hearings were held uh, September 23rd and October 14th. Um, we actually had no negative commentary uh, on either, either of these, whether that be the public hearing, whether that be, uh, I'm sorry, development and planning process. Uh, we did receive emails, we did receive calls, and there was some pub public comment uh, on both September 23rd and October 14th uh, that was in support of the creation or the establishment of these two corridor improvement authorities. But as it pertains to South MLK, um, again, it should be noted that the uh, master plan does uh, call for specific improvements on South MLK. Uh, particularly uh, at some of the critical nodes along that corridor. Uh, so with that being said, I would move the resolution to establish the South Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard Corridor Improvement Authority and the designation of the development area. 
Uh, we have a motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay, we are to the Committee on Intergovernmental Relations. Councilmember Jackson. Thank you. I have a motion to amend the project uh, term for our um, consultation to develop a climate action plan. And basically, at the beginning of last year, we hired a lady, Ann is her name, to help us gather data from different city departments and help us form a climate action plan and recommendation to the administration for um, actions moving forward. Uh, it started off slow. We didn't ratify that agreement for months after the initial term. And from there, uh, it was just a little slow trying to gather the data because it's a lot of data. We extended the deadline in the past once for those reasons. Um, our goal was to have it done by 2019, but it appears that she's not gonna have enough time to get the data and to make the recommendations. So we're asking to uh, move to extend it to February 28th. That's the timeline that Ann uh, suggested. So hopefully we can have that by then. So All right. All right, we have a motion before us, a resolution. Are there any questions or concerns about this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. And we are to the Committee on Public Safety. Councilmember Hussein, uh, we will take up item B after the uh, passage of the ordinance, so we're down to item C. Okay, so to my council colleagues, there are a number of materials in your supporting documents folder that pertain to the next four items. Uh, so as I read through those, if you wanna take a look at those, feel free. Uh, the first uh, traffic control order uh, deals with number 19015. Uh, this is stop signs on North Cedar Street at Howe Avenue. There was actually a request filed by the Lansing Police Department for a stop sign at North Cedar and Howe. Uh, it was determined that um, they just didn't exist and they probably should have. In any event, there was a field investigation to determine uh, site distances and traffic, traffic control requirements um, and crash data was also inspected. A safe approach speed study was performed and revealed a safe approach speed of less than five miles per hour. The threshold I believe that was given to us um, for installation of stop signs, I believe it was 19 miles per hour and lower. Uh, so obviously it, it certainly meets that threshold. Uh, no vehicular crash Crashes have been reported since January 1st, 2013, but due to um, the studies, the traffic studies, as well as the LPD's request, uh, public services is recommending an addition of a stop sign for uh, both northbound and southbound Cedar Street at Howe Avenue. Uh, the Public Service Board did take a look at this. They uh, concurred with the recommendation. We looked at it in public safety. We also agreed. And so with that being said, I would move the resolution. I have a motion on the resolution. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Passes unanimously. Councilmember Hussein. Next res resolution deals with traffic, traffic control order number 19-002 for stop signs on eastbound Hunter Boulevard and westbound Ridgewood Avenue at Hunter Boulevard and Wildwood Avenue. Uh, the request uh, for this traffic, traffic study, I should say, came uh, from a resident. Uh, the request was to take a look at traffic uh, control at intersection or at the intersection of Hunter Boulevard and Ridgewood Avenue and Wildwood Avenue. Uh, again, a safe approach speed study was conducted. It revealed a safe approach speed of 14 miles per hour, again, meeting the threshold um, required. The safe approach speed is, um, let's see, nope, sorry, Public Services is now recommending the installation of the stop signs on eastbound Hunter Boulevard and westbound Ridgewood Avenue at Hunter and Wildwood. Uh, to help to assign right of way at the intersection. Again, public services took a look at this, public safety took a look at this, uh, both bodies did um, concur. So with that being said, and there was some information, I should uh, just add really quickly, I think this is relevant as well, there was some information pertaining to uh, vehicular accidents. There have actually been three accidents since January 1st, 2014, and two of the three involved drivers being cited for failure to yield. Uh, so it's believed by public services that those may have not been issues uh, had stop signs been installed at that intersection. So with that being said, I would move the resolution. I have a motion. Are there any questions or concerns? 
Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Councilmember Hussein. The next resolution deals with traffic control order. Where are we at? E number 18-064, uh, removing the parking prohibition along the north side of South Genesee Drive from Verlinden Avenue to Memphis Street. Uh, the request again came from a group of residents to allow parking on at least one side of Genesee Drive from Verlinden to Memphis. Um, after conducting a field check, Transportation Division of the Public Services Department did mail a survey to property owners and occupants along the corridor to determine support. Uh, there were two options that were included in the survey, uh, one being uh, to not allow parking on either side of the street or to allow parking on one side of the street. 12 of the 21 surveys mailed were returned and 11 of the 12 uh, supported allow allowing parking on one side of the street. Based on survey results, uh, as well as street, uh, street width, it was determined that the street width, I think, from uh, curb, to cu uh, curb to curb was 26 feet. Uh, the Transportation Division is recommending uh, traffic, traffic Control Order 18-064, which would remo remove the prohibition along the north side of South Genesee Street. So with that being said, I would move uh, TCO number 18-064. Uh, we have a motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Councilmember Hussein. This deals with rescinding traffic uh, control orders number 94-028 as well as 94-029, uh, which regulates parking along both sides of Palmer Street from Willard Avenue to Dunlap Street and Rosadell Avenue from Almar Lane to Washington Avenue. Uh, the request, and this is, I should have, uh, we actually discussed this in public safety, should have discussed um, where these other uh, TCOs were positioned. This is positioned in the second ward. Uh, the request uh, to remove the parking restrictions along the 2900 block of Palmer um, came in from uh, residents. There was a 1994 request uh, for uh, basically some parking restrictions in this area. And those parking restrictions were um, essentially to try to deter all day parking uh, from hospital employees. So in any event, a new request came in. There was a field study that was conducted. Um, street widths were examined. Uh, Transportation Division did uh, mail surveys to property owners and occupants along Palmer, Willard, Almar, and Rosadell with three options in this case. One was to not change uh, traffic control restrictions. One was to allow unrestricted uh, parking on both sides of the street. And the third option was to allow two hour parking uh, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday on both sides of the street. Based on the results, uh, which were really kind of broken down by street and broken down, uh, down by option, um, and again, those are in your supplemental materials, the Transportation Division did recommend rescinding Traffic Control Order 94-028, as well as Traffic Control uh, Order, I'm sorry, number 94-029, uh, which will allow for parking on both sides of Palmer from Willard to Dunlap and Rosadell from Almar to Washington. Uh, the other two CEOs, TCOs that were parked, I'm sorry, approved, um, that deal with parking in 1994 will remain in place and those deal with uh, Almar and Willard Avenues. So with that being said, I would move the resolution. We have a motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. We are to the Committee on Public Services. Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, I move the resolution for Act 6-2019, an acquisition of approximately 25,740 square feet adjoining Davis Park. Act 7, 2019, acquisition of approximately 3.47 acres adjoining Scott Woods. And Act 8, 2019, an acquisition of 1.602 acres adjoining the Hunters Ridge Park, Fulton Park, and Fine Park. Uh, these are property uh, acquisitions that adjoin current city parks. Um, so it expands the park's footprint, but does not add new parks to the city. Um, we are looking at uh, parcel number one, or, well, the first one being Wise Road. Uh, it's appraised value of $16,750. We received a Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund for $12,562.57 for land acquisition and a city match of $4,187.50. The second parcel, 1800 Willard Avenue, adjoining Scott Woods, is $27,000 appraised value. The grant provided $17,300 for that acquisition, with a city match of $9,700. And the third parcel at 4000 Hunters Ridge, um, adjoining Hunters Ridge, Fulton, and Fine Parks, is appraised at $130,000, of which the grant would pay for $91,000. 
$425 and the city match of $38,575. All of these funds that our city match come from the park acquisition and development account um, for these purposes, which I believe is funded primarily through is that cell phone tower leases. That, that and, and some of the parks uh, millage money. Okay, good. There are maps in your red folder if you want, to, if you want an area view of that, but we discussed these in the Public Service Committee. They were uh, vetted by the Lansing Parks Board and the Planning Board, and uh, the recommendation for the administration is for approval. Are there any questions or concerns? Uh, Vice President Spadafore, are these all private acquisitions from private individuals, or are any of these land bank properties? That question was not asked, but does the administration Okay. Just one moment, please. Which I'm ones? just curious. So Which ones are we looking at? I'm sorry. I stepped out. The acquisitions on the parks, whether yeah. these were I private individuals or whether any of these were land bank properties. Well, one of them was a land bank property. I'd have to go back and look, but I'm almost okay. positive one of them. We are we were considering a purchase from a land bank, but actually it may not have been part of this package. I think these are private. I'll go back and find out because there was one land bank property we were looking at, but I don't believe it was on this list. I think. Okay. Um, I think that was. There was, there was a different park acquisition that was land bank and it wasn't in this package. I don't think it's okay. I think we have not we have not figured that one out yet. So okay. we have not brought it to you yet. All right, thank you. Uh, with that, are there any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed passes unanimously. Thank you. We are to the committee of the whole. Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, um, I move the resolution approving the, the collective bargaining agreement with UAW Local 2256. Um, that is a three-year contract extending from October 1st, 2019 through September 30th, 2022 with a 3.0, 3.0, and 2.25 wage increase in the first, second, and third years, respectively. Upon ratification, each full-time employee will receive a $1,000 signing bonus. And as of January 1st, 2020, new employees hired into that uh, into local 2256 will no longer be eligible for health care retiree instead a health care savings plan. Okay, we have a um, motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Pose. Passes unanimously. Vice President Spadafore. Oops. Here's the green light on. Uh, Madam President, I move the resolution approving the retirement health care benefits for the 54A District Court judges, as was discussed in the Committee of the Whole. This came down as a directive from the Supreme Court. It was negotiated with the Chief Judge, who is still here. There she is, Judge Alderson, um, and the city, and it is before us for approval. All right, we have a motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes, you, uh, passes, uh, <laughs> thank you. We are to reports from council committees. We have a report from the committee on intergovernmental relations. Council member Jackson. Thank you, Madam President. So as chair of intergovernmental relations, we primarily work on one thing this year, which is to develop a climate action plan. And you know, our goal was ambitious. We hope to get it done in 2019, but really we didn't know what all it would entail. One thing that we learned is that we need to collect data um, from the city department and operations to gather a baseline and to be able to monitor and assess how we move forward, including recommendations um, for the administration and for the city. So this is just a report. It's one page long. It talks about what we did, but um, just to go over some of the highlights and not read it all here. Again, the goal was a strong and effective climate action plan. We didn't want to just throw anything together that wasn't going to do anything and that would just look good. We wanted something that's going to have some teeth, something that's going to impact our carbon footprint, reduce our emissions, and increase our energy efficiency, among other things. So we were really slow getting information. Um, and we moved the timeline a few times, but long story short is we talked to Ann Earhart and she
she recommended to us that no matter what the data shows, her recommendation will be a sustainability manager for the city as one of the first, if not the first move. And those aren't my words, those are hers. So I made sure I included that in our report. Um, but ultimately, it's of the opinion from a lot of people, including the world scientists, that we are very near a tipping point in our whole world, our globe, that we're all a part of, where if we don't change what we're doing fa way faster than we're doing now, then we're going to pass the point of the <coughs> that things are going to get worse and worse for everybody, including Lansing, Michigan. And as Randy mentioned in his um, time that it's up to everybody, local, state, federal, international, to come together. It's our vision that a climate action plan and a sustainability manager will help us moving forward because we're either going to get federal and international mandates or there are going to be federal incentives and state incentives that we all need to capitalize to make this happen. So somebody in place will be able to maximize that. Um, last part is just for those who do not know what I'm talking about or are skeptical at all, I challenge everybody to educate themselves. Just it's 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 more it's becoming more and more evident in more and more places. But just you know, I tell people to start with the International Panel on Climate Change 1.5 <coughs> summary report. That's a page or something. And then if you see something online or CNN or Fox, go ahead and click on it and read what it's talking about. When you hear the international news, just follow up because we need people to get on board faster than we have so far. So um, you remember last year I kind of went um, pretty hard as far as budget and all that. I'll be doing the same and encouraging my colleagues to make sure that we have a sustainability manager for a lot of important reasons. Um, and this is just a one-page report that goes over our work for the year. Are you asking this to be placed on file? Yes, would you, I would move that it's placed on file. All right, are there any other comments? Councilmember Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. So do you guys have an idea, since you're talking about budget next year, of how much it costs for a sustainability manager well, no, but um, it's, it's going to be a decently high-level position, so I would say that's a range of 70 to 140. Well, I, I would say if, you know, I think that if, and I, I, I think that if we're going to do that, um, you know, if you have a number in front of us, it makes it a lot easier for us to figure out. Because I'm not, I'm not saying I'm against it, but I'm just trying to figure out how much that's going to cost and what's that going to mean to the budget. Councilmember um, Jackson. Thank you, and that's a good point. I, I think I'm going to have to be the person to get down to those nuts and bolts, but um, we'll have to, I mean, I don't know if I'm the proper person to do a study on comparable or if it's if it's in the budget or if it's not in the budget that we have to do it, but it looks like I'll be taking the lead and I'll ask to be on intergovernmental relations next year to continue that work. Council, <coughs> Councilmember Jackson, one of the things you might look at is as the report is becoming finalized that one of the things that you add in the report is what the estimate is for a sustainable since that's going to be her recommendation councilmember washington thank you madam president i would also suggest since <coughs> excuse me uh human resources comes under the mayors that you would include uh, linda sanchez gazelle I mean, she's the one that should be figuring out what the pay scales should be, not council. And furthermore, um, there also needs to be um, job duties. You, know, you can't just put out there, we're going to have this sustainability manager. What are they going to do? What are they going to be responsible for? Who are they going to reach out to? Are they going to negotiate solar panels on all of these marijuana grows that are taking up huge amounts of electricity? Are they going to work with CADA to make sure we have better public transportation so people can get out of their cars? Are they going to work with the county for sustainable access? 
agriculture? Are they going to, I mean, there's so much that you have to put this in. You just can't throw out there a sustainability manager and not know what, um, what the responsibilities and duties are. And then I would suggest that you work with the mayor's staff to figure out what level that would be, who they would report to, what the amount would be. There's a lot more to it than just saying it. Thank you. Um, with that, um, all those in favor of placing a file, say aye. 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 And we also have a committee report from the Committee on Public Safety. Councilmember Hussein. So the policy in your pack, this, this deals with an adopted, um, I'm sorry, the report deals with an adopted policy uh, of the Public Safety Committee. We had, we had a very active committee, and I really appreciated the, um, the leadership of Councilman Wood. Uh, we had a, a very responsive committee. We had a number of concerns come in uh, pertaining to, as an example, aggressive dogs out in our community. Uh, and some of the response uh, from dispatch and police department and Ingham Animal Control and, you know, et cetera. So we brought in, actually, as a committee, uh, we brought in the Ingham County Animal Control uh, office as well as the Ingham County 911 dispatch um, officials and had some really good conversations uh, pertaining to the foregoing, but also the conversation really transcended just aggressive dogs, and we just had some really, really, really good communications in uh, public safety. That precipitated uh, a policy because it was very clear that uh, there are times when, as an example, city council passes an ordinance, and maybe the information is not conveyed uh, to those respective groups. Uh, and so um, there's a little bit of confusion, uh, particularly when somebody calls into uh, the dispatch center on a violation of uh, an ordinance that maybe you know, had recently been passed, uh, and the dispatch um, has no idea uh, in terms of how to dispatch that call. So uh, we actually came up with a policy in public safety, uh, and we passed it. Uh, the policy includes the following provisions. One, when an ordinance is adopted by the Lansing City Council that affects Ingham County Animal Control and or Ingham County 911 dispatch, uh, the ordinance will be sent to the attention of the director of the affected entity. Two, along with the ordinance, a summary sheet will be attached to explain the ordinance and the enforcement mechanism. And three, if requested by the director of the affected entity, the city attorney's office will meet with and instruct the director and her staff on the ordinance. Uh, so that is the policy, and I would ask that this body um, approve the report. We have a motion. Are there any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passage unanimously. Thank you. Okay, and we are to ordinances for passage. <clears throat> we have an ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan to amend Chapter 404 of the Lansing Codified Ordinances by adding Section 404.13 to provide for the issuance of annual and temporary 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. street parking permits to City of Lansing residents and to provide for permit applications, limitations, and fees. It was read a second time by its title. The ordinance was reported from the Committee on Public Safety and is on the order of immediate passage. Council Member Hussein. Um, go through this. Um, I think just a brief summary, if there are other questions, then we can deal with those at that time if not well I, had this out there and it's been discussed and okay at a public hearing so it's Charlie well, it, the, I'll, I'll just give a little bit of background then because I think it's important we in 2018 uh, we went out as a public safety committee uh, to the respective wards of the city and we had conversations pertaining to uh, the two to five uh, street parking ban in the city of Lansing and we obviously threw out a number of um, ideas uh, in terms of how the ordinance could potentially be amended uh, and then we also talked about enforcement of the two to five. Uh, and depending on geographic location, depending on um, when the um, neighborhoods uh, essentially were built and constructed and configured and things like that, uh, there were, uh, I mean, we got an, uh, some really, really, I thought, uh, good input. Uh, but it was varied and, and it, was, it was diverse depending on where we were at. It was very, very clear at that time um, that regardless, you know, regardless what we did, folks wanted to see enforcement of some measure. So we have been working in public safety uh, for uh, well over a year now um, on some type of ordinance that would be responsive and reflective of what we heard out in the community, and we think we've arrived um, at, at such an ordinance. And this would allow for essentially uh, permits uh, for on-street parking. Um, permits would be based on, at least for the annual permits, because this does allow for both annual uh, as well as temporary 
Uh, the annual would be based on um, demonstrable need. Uh, when we talk about, we had some people come up to the podium and talk about criteria and things of that nature. We have through this ordinance given uh, the power to create the system essentially to uh, the parking manager. Um, with regards to the, the annual uh, permit, it does limit uh, annual permits to one per residential address. There was a lot of uh, question, there were a lot of commentary in terms of multifamily housing. Uh, and if you have, as an example, um, a multifamily property that has 103A, 103B, and 103C as units, uh, those folks could all apply. And, and again, I'm, I'm only covering this because we had a lot of questions pertaining to this. They could all apply uh, for an annual permit. Obviously, they would have to then um, prove a demonstrable need. Uh, so that does not necessarily mean that all three individuals would actually receive uh, annual permits. Uh, in terms of the temporary, we had a lot of conversation about the temporary. Uh, and we started at um, a, a limit of temporary permits per residential address. And where we've arrived now through a little bit of uh, negotiation, I think, between public safety, uh, respective members of public safety, we also had some conversations with administration, uh, we've arrived at uh, a limit of two uh, per 72 hour period per residential address, uh, as opposed to, uh, I think where we started was four uh, temporary permits per residential address per year. Um, and I will let folks weigh in on that um, after, after we're done with this, obviously, this presentation. Uh, there will be a subsequent resolution um, based on parking uh, permit fees for both the annual as well as the temporary. Uh, and those were determined, I'll present on that in a minute, but those were, um, put forth by our economic development and planning director uh, after they took a, um, a look at what it would actually cost to uh, administer permits uh, and, and put, enforce some of the provisions of this, this ordinance. Um, at the, I get, you know, and obviously there will be a number of questions and I would assume there's a lot of uh, commentary, but at this point I would move the ordinance. Okay, we have a motion um, before us. I have Councilmember Washington and Vice President Spadafore. Okay, thank you. Um, seems like the big issues in this from this year have been parking people in pot for Lansing. Um, here's, I'm just going to ask it. Is this the original agreement that came out of public safety and with the mayor? Is this it? Because um, there's been a lot of craziness and foolishness surrounding this, and I want to know if this is what was originally agreed to. Go, go ahead, yeah. Mayor. Yeah, I, I believe the document in front of you, the ordinance document in front, of, and the resolution actually. I think they both reflect the conversation that that I had with the chair, and subsequently after that, several members of the committee and then of council. Um, I'm comfortable with the document in front of you as as, uh, as what we had. absolutely, yes, thank you. I think the other thing to add um, before I call on Vice President Spadafore is the mayor has uh, committed to making sure that there is enforcement, that we started out that premise and we asked that question in the very beginning when I met with him as we were picking this up. If we do not have a commitment for enforcement and going to have it happen, then there was no purpose in doing the ordinance. And Mayor Shore? Yeah, I, I committed to the council president that I would say it in my words, so I'll do that. Um, yeah, um, we clearly struggle with enforcing what we have on the books now because it's just the least priority for police. This in front of us will allow people to, uh, to park on the streets in, in, uh, overnight in limited circumstances where it's legal, and it will allow for dollars to be raised for parking enforcement to go out and enforce. And, and we believe this is the best structure with the, the best fees, which uh, the councilman referenced still gets you next. Uh, and if there are any you know, changes or adjustments, the, uh, the fees are set by council yearly. So it's not like this is it and this is all. So um, we can make adjustments in the, in the future. But we're comfortable that this will, um, that this will be enforceable. Uh, the first few months will be tricky um, because you have to get the permits, which is why I appreciate the March, uh, the March effective date. Um, so we have to, to bring on someone who's able to, to do it temporarily and then bring on an employee. We have to collect the, the fees and revenues, but, um, but we're comfortable that between the, the permits and, and the ticket revenues that'll come into the parking system for those who are, um, who are breaking the law, that we'll be able to enforce this. Thank you, Vice President Spadafore, then Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. Through you to Council Member Hussein. A couple questions, if I may. Sure. Thank you. Um, I read the language on fees. Um, let me find the page citation for you. It's on page five of eight of the draft. 
subsection 7. Um, the annual fee shall be paid at the beginning of the permit year or when the application is granted, except that a payment plan may be set up at the discretion of the parking manager. I'm sure this may have come up in committee, and I'm sorry if I wasn't there for that discussion. Does this leave room for a proration? So I move out of the city, I move into the city, uh, I'm committed to 12 months, or does it allow me to do the three months of that year, or how does that work? We discussed that in committee, unless you know my committee uh, colleagues want to correct me. My understanding was no. No, okay. Um, does the second question related to fees, is there flexibility in uh, the fee structure, i.e. the, um, like with trash services, for instance, for a, uh, refuse services for a low income um, consideration? We asked that question in committee, uh, and we were told in committee at the last meeting that the administration could still carry out the provisions of this ordinance and create an income-based program. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And then um, I have two more, if I may. Um, I believe you addressed it, but um, there are some concern that some streets are not wide enough, et cetera. So this still allows for traffic control, control orders to dictate no parking zones, um, even with a two to five parking permit? All traffic control orders will still be in effect and okay. still be enforced. Yes. Excellent, thank even you. from two to five. And then my final one. Um, you, you mentioned demonstrable need. Um, the ordinance states an explanation by the applicant of the need to park on a residential street within the city. How detailed, uh, who's making that decision as the parking manager or is this just more pro forma? The parking manager. Parking manager, okay, thank you. And council member, Vice President Spadafore, they can request additional information. They can go out and do a site visit or pictures or whatever they determine they need to make that determination was what we had talked about, what was um, explained to us um, by um, the parking manager while he was there. Yes, Vice President Spadafore. Then I, I have a follow-up question then. I'm more, um, I support the ordinance. I'm gonna, I will support the ordinance. I, my question though is on that section uh, B sub five to the city attorney perhaps. Does this open us up to a situation where the parking manager is making arbitrary decisions? I mean, there doesn't seem to be much guidance here as to what that need is or how those decisions should be made. That, that part's just giving me a little bit of heartburn. And we would, be I'm sorry. Before the city attorney answers, I think one of the questions we had asked to the other attorneys that were there, that just like anything else, a policy will have to be written by okay. that, Thank you. by the parking manager, so that the, that it isn't capricious. Okay. If that was question that was valid answer, I might also. Well, Your mic is not on. Okay, then. Uh, <clears throat> that's a valid question. That's a valid answer that was given to you, but also. It appears, based upon the ordinance, that as long as there's some factual need that's put in the application, it should be approved, and that's the way we would advise. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate the answer. <coughs> Council Member. Uh, it was related. Yes. Proration and low income. I, I guess I wouldn't mind weighing in because some of this is going to be, the question seemed to be how is this going to be administered? Um, so in terms of the, the low income and the proration, we're, we're taking a look at that. Councilman Hussein is absolutely right. That, that is on us. Um, as, as you all know, with trash, we do that on our own. It's not a council, um, it, and it shouldn't be. It's not a council requirement. In essence, you set the max, and then we can set the limits under that. We are, we are looking at the kind of low income question um, because it is a, a bond-funded um, enterprise fund there are serious questions on whether we can do disparate um, pricing or whether we can't. The fund is a little bit separate from trash, so we are looking into all the legalities of that. Um, so just know that that, is, that has been brought to my attention, but we're still trying to figure out if it's possible. We also, um, for, you know, for $10 a day for temporary licenses, I don't know there's a low income rate, for $125 for the year, you know, we certainly will be offering payment plans and things like that if someone wants to pay $10 a month. Um, so we're, we're looking into that. Um, and then the proration, um, we don't prorate for other licenses. Um, so if you're gonna get an annual, um, we're, we're navigating, we're actually happy it's gonna be till March because there were a few conditions there that, that we wanted to take a look at in terms of when you get it, if it's 365 days. The ordinance says, July 1 to June 30 because it's on the budget year, so that way you all can do the fees as part of the normal fee resolution. We're continuing to look at that, um, and we want to see if, if there's a um, 
the necessity of coming to you with a further recommendation for where the days start and stop. We're, we're still kind of navigating that because the idea of proration or getting a license in March for $125 and having to pay $125 again in June is four months fair. We're navigating some of that. So we may, we may come back and have that conversation with council. So I, we are sensitive to that argument, but the recommendation I know that we gave and I uh, appreciate the committee's consideration was kind of leave it the way it is because we've got it. And then if we have to come back to council to, um, to further navigate the kind of the cleanups early next year, then we'll do that. Because again, we have till March to figure it out. To, to not to figure it out, we've got to, to, to clean up any of the details. Before I call on Council Member Spitzley, I just want to remind the mayor whether they do it for four months or they do it for a year, there is a cost to do that. And that's why this committee decided not to do a proration because that's what we asked, not what was the cost to be on the street, but what was the cost to issue the permit. And that's exactly why we left it there. That was the exact Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. And I, I will add, you know, the, the issue I always have is ordinance, ordinances on the books that we can't enforce. And so the, the fee structure is supposedly to pay for this person to enforce. And so I would not be in favor of a proration for the annual permit either. Um, last thing we want is for us to put an ordinance on the books and then have people come to us six months later because it's not being enforced. And that just kind of defeats the purpose. But um, you know, one of the things that I did have, a, the ordinance, I am supportive of the ordinance. It has been worked on for a long time. One of the concerns I had was um, for our first responders and our street sweepers and our snow removal folks to make sure that um, they are able to do their jobs. And so I, I did have a concern about congestion of streets, but we've put together a mechanism, um, if I'm not mistaken, to notify people, particularly if we're gonna be shoveling snow and other things that they have to move their cars off the streets so that we can keep our streets clean. And okay. so with that, if, and if that's not in there still, let no, me know, it's but, still in there. okay. So with that and with the, with the annual fee structure so that we can hire somebody to enforce it, I think that while not perfect, I think it is, it's a pretty good ordinance. So I will be supportive, thank you. Uh, Council Member Jackson and then Council Member Washington. Thank you, I have two areas of concerns here. So one is the unfettered discretion of the parking manager. Um, Basically, so demonstrable need, showing need, that's, that's vague in itself. I know policies may someday get written, even though it's not a part of this ordinance. And I would, I don't know when the appropriate time is, but I would move to amend that we include in section E10 language that says that any decision, any final decision by the parking manager can be appealed to council. Uh -huh. All it does is gives us, just gives the people one chance if they don't like the decision to come and say it to council because everybody's opinion on need is a lot different. Um, for example, is this need? I went to a house on William Street in the Fourth Ward where <coughs> it was a couple who had a single car garage and had a car in it. They have a total of three vehicles. One is a business pickup truck. They have a really skinny driveway that does fit barely two cars in it. However, the schedule of the couple is such that one works at night, the other works in the day, and that it would require someone to either wake up in the middle of the night to move the car so the car can get in there, or to get out, for example, and that would be an everyday thing. So that's just one example there. Um, so I make that first motion to add that council be able to appeal it, whether it goes to general services first or the committee as a whole, it doesn't matter. But I think there should be some layer of review. Mr. C uh, Mr. City Attorney. I think that I already stated that the opinion of our office will be to the parking manager that any written statement of need would be sufficient. So there is no discretion. There just has to be a statement of need because there are questions about being arbitrary and capricious, yes. 
I appreciate that. It's kind of assuring that you know the people who need the permits will get it. However, a statement of need still defines need. Is my example need when all cars coexist in the parking lot, but it is severely inconvenient for a person? I'm not sure. But if that person is denied or approved, well, denied, they should still have the ability to come to council. So, you know, I'll just renew that motion. It'll vote the way it does. We. Uh, we we have a motion before us. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. All opposed, aye. aye. Fails. <clears throat> Council Member um, Jackson. Thank you. As far as fees are concerned, um, I appreciate the conversation around um, people who need it or low income and all these different things. However, I would also want to and will move to add that parking manager has the discretion to waive the fees on a sufficient Mr. Basis. Council Member Jackson, we're not on the fees. Okay. We're at, at the, we will have a separate resolution on that. All the ordinance does is says that by resolution, council will set fees. So when we get to that, you're more than welcome to make a motion then. Well, it also says the parking manager will collect the fees. Um, but, and that's fine. I'll make it later. But just to finish. Did you want to parking manager not to collect the fees? Well, I want the parking manager not to have to collect the fees if the parking manager determines that there's a sufficient need for it not to. Um, but I would also want to see that appeal to the council as not to uh, still move that there is a way for people not to have to pay. And it goes like this. The city has already determined that there is a need in this household for a permit. So if there's already the need there, why? who are we to just put a fee on As far as the need to raise money, if we actually do increase informant enforcement and we actually have someone out there ticketing the people who don't have the permits or aren't supposed to be there, that could be enough work probably for a person every night. And that would be of increased fees that I don't know if is considered here. So I'll just, I guess, move to add C7 to say that the parking manager may waive the fees based on the X amount of the um, City Attorney. Um, this is a proprietary fund. Uh, the parking system is, is known as a proprietary fund. It's subject to the Revenue Bond Act, the State Revenue Bond Act. It's a physical capital improvement under the Revenue Bond Act whether bonds are sold or not. And that provision of the Revenue Bond Act uh, provides that you cannot give free service, which has been interpreted to waivers, to uh, low-income plans. You could do that in another way, low-income plans, but you cannot give free service. I mean, that's been the law in the state for years, so. Councilmember Jackson. Well, are we defining that as a service because trash, garbage, Water, those are services, so to speak. But parking on the street is something we just made in public safety. It's part of the. It's no. It's listed as a physical uh, capital improvement in the Revenue Bond Act parking systems. So, trash may or may not be it, uh, be subject to it, but uh, parking certainly is. Councilmember Washington. I just want to move on. I'll pass. Okay. So um, we. This is a roll call vote, Council or um, Mr. Clerk. On passage of the ordinance, Council Member Dunbar, Council Member Garza, yes. Council Member Hussein, yes. Council Member Jackson, yes. Council Member Spadafore, yes. Council Member Spitzley, yes. Council Member Washington, yes. Council Member Wood, yes. Seven yeas, one nay, the ordinance is adopted. And we are returning to resolutions for action by the Committee on Public Safety. And just for the public that might be listening out there, this does not go into effect until March 1st, 2020, which we will have a rollout and different information that will be presented um, next year by the administration as to how to apply for an application 
where numbers, all of those types of things. So with that, uh, Council Member Hussein, um, the ordinance number is 1259 that should be in the blank um, that you have in front of you. Thank you. You said 1259? Yes. In any event, we've had a lot of conversation about fees, how we arrive at fees um, for, um, in this case, uh, permits. Um, in any event, the, the you do have a, a substitute before you. I'm gonna ask uh, first that we move uh, for acceptance of the substitute, but before I do that, uh, the reason for the substitute is that the original uh, resolution included two fees. The ordinance uh, calls for temporary permits to be valid uh, for a time not to exceed 72 hours. And so the original resolution um, called for a annual uh, permit cost of $125 and a 72 hour permit uh, for I believe it was $30. Um, there was some, some subsequent conversation um, that uh, to, be, to be candid was, was new and we hadn't thought of. Um, and you may have an individual as an example that only needs a permit for 24 hours of that 72 hour period as an example. So we wanted to make sure that we uh, created a fee schedule for that. So in any event, uh, before I get to the actual fees, I would like to move the um, substitute or acceptance of the substitute. Thank you. The other issue with the substitute is the, um, be it further resolved, that the city council sets the fee for replacement of an annual, which was not in the original resolution, was something that I was told that the city attorney's office would fall on the sword for. So um, with that, we have the substitute. All those in favor of um, the introduction of the substitute, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, now we have the substitute in front of us. All right, and the substitute does contain three, uh, therefore be it resolved. Uh, the first would be the annual overnight parking permit uh, fee of $125. The second, um, as discussed by Councilwoman Wood, would set the fee for replacement of annual overnight parking permits at $30. And the third uh, sets the fee for temporary overnight parking permits at $10 per 24 hour period for a maximum of $30 for a 72 hour period. With that being said, I would move the resolution. Councilmember Jackson. We, we, it, it, Council Member Jackson, if you just remember what the city attorney just said, he said that um, we have to have a fee, but you can make um, a recommendation to set it lower, which you just have. So with that, all those in favor of um, substituting the $125 for $12.50, say aye. aye. All those opposed, say aye. 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 Um, the motion fails. Um, Mr. Hussein, we've moved this, so any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, passes with the dissension of Councilmember Jackson. We are to the order of speaker, we are to speaker <coughs> registration for public comment on city government related matters. That's the yellow sheet in the back. Please jump up right now if you need to sign up, otherwise it's going away. Um, and we are two reports of city officers, boards, and commissions. Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, I move that all items be considered as being read in full and that the proper referrals be made by you. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. We have a letter from the city clerk with minutes of boards, commissions, and authorities. Place on file. Letters from the mayor regarding the appointment of Kathy Toby to the fire board. Uh, Public safety committee. The reappointment of Josh Hovey. Hovey is the planning board representative to the board of zoning appeals. Development and planning committee. Grant acceptance, uh, Lansing Police Department for the burn justice grant. Ways and means and internal auditor. Grant acceptance, Lansing Police Department 
uh, for the 2019 Justice Assistance Grant. Ways and Means and Internal Auditor. Grant acceptance Lansing Parks and Recreation with the Lansing Police Department uh, for the Project Safe Neighborhood Grant. Ways and Means and Internal Auditor. Collective Bargaining Agreement to UAW Local 2256. Committee of a Whole and Placed on File. The appointment of Nathan Triplett to the Capillaria Transportation Authority Board. Intergovernmental Relations. The reappointment of Derek Milo as a member of the Elected Officers Compensation Commission. Committee of Whole. Communications and Petition. A communication from UAW Local 652 regarding the City Council support of striking workers. Placed on file. We are to remarks by Council Members. Council Member Relump Marks. Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to um, kind of clarify my vote on the consent agenda. Um, I did vote no on the consent agenda, but I totally support um, the um, disapproval of the reappointment of Tim Barron. Um, I did move that motion in public safety, and so I just didn't want um, any confusion on what my vote was. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Washington. Thank you, Madam President. I also want to explain my vote on that. I fully approved of Marcy Elling as an at-large member of the Board of Zoning Appeals, but I also was in approval of Tim Barron being appointed as the media representative. And I think it was a little confusing because here it says um, on our agenda, reappointment of Tim Barron, but the um, resolution actually says denial, and I'm not sure that maybe someone, one of my colleagues may have voted differently had they been aware of what they were actually voting on. So I would um, ask in the future that that be looked at very carefully. Thank you. Yeah. Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, a point of order and out of respect for my colleagues, there was dissent on the consent agenda, so if we'd like to vote on those items separately, it would be in order. Are you asking to reconsider the vote? I'm asking to reconsider the vote due to right, the lack of clarity. We have a motion to reconsider the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, so the first item would be one eight. Marcy, the appointment um, to the development and planning. Uh, so we have a motion from uh, Vice President Spadafore. I would move. Uh, yeah. Sure. So we had we had Marcy Allen in uh, today. She as a again, this would be a reappointment as an at-large member to the BZA. Uh, Marcy has done a very nice job on that board, uh, candidly, for the last 10 years. She is currently chair. Um, her term did expire this past June. Um, she uh, was was happy um, to reapply, wants to be uh, reappointed. Again, She, I, I think she has served with distinction. I think the committee uh, certainly uh, agreed. And so it was out with, without hesitation that we, we approved the reappointment. All right, we have a motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, uh, yes. Um, the Council on Member Public Spitzley. Safety. Yeah. Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. Sorry. Thank you, Madam President. What we have before us is a motion to deny the appointment of Tim Barron to the uh, deny the reappointment of Tim Barron as media representative to the Ingham County. Um, slash City of Lansing Community Corrections Advisory Board for a term expiring September 17, 2022. We have a motion. Um, any comments? Seeing none. All those in favor of the de denial say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, next is the um, settlement on the workers' comp under Committee of a Whole, Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, the Committee of the Whole met and recommended the approval of the settlement of workers' compensation claim number 206-2876-01145, and I move the approval of that claim. We have a motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Now we're to... Now we are to speaker... Uh, or the public comment. We have yes, thank you for that. Catherine Gleason, followed by Loretta Stanaway. Catherine Gleason. Yep. 
Good evening. Council President Wood, City Council, and Mayor Shore. I am Catherine Gleason. I've lived in Midtown Lansing for 10 years, most of it at Capitol Common Senior, near the corner of Kalamazoo and Pine. In recent years, my activities with voter registration brought me into close contact with hundreds of my neighbors, and I'm here on their behalf. They have a variety of ideas about many political and city issues and topics. The one thing that unifies all of them is the issue of catabuses, specifically inbound catabuses for the residents of the neighborhood around City Hall, the Capitol building, and the government workers. With the pending or actual appointment of Nathan Triplett to the CATA board, I want the mayor Council, Mr. Triplett, and CATA to be aware of this important issue that impacts many vulnerable people who live in downtown Lansing. The inbound buses that were once available to the residents of Midtown Lansing have been rerouted to service government workers on Capitol and Elegant. More than 300 buses a day manage to bypass these residents and instead cover repeatedly and uselessly the same bit of road over and over all day long. This goes on before and after government workers come in for the day and after they leave. It goes on all weekend when there are no government workers in Midtown. Hundreds of buses roll down miles of otherwise empty city streets more than half of the time. My first request is on behalf of the 220 seniors of Capitol Commons. The people of this building are all elderly or handicapped, and most are unable to walk six blocks to the CTC. Additionally, they have to pass through a rough neighborhood, heavy automobile traffic, government workers again, drug traffic, and poorly maintained broken sidewalks. Spectron is too expensive to meet the basic needs of these people. They, we, are trapped. I'm requesting that an inbound bus that was removed from our residential neighborhood years ago and rerouted inbound eastward along Elegant to Capitol be returned to us and routed instead eastbound along Kalamazoo, then southbound on Pine with a stop and a shelter in front of Capitol Commons Senior on Pine Street, a bus for our building and neighborhood twice an hour all day long. This is for hundreds of people in my building alone, thousands of people in that little corner of Ward 4 with a shelter. The second request I have for CAD is that the 10 inbound buses that now are confined to Capitol and Allegan be rerouted back to some of the original routes Bus routes should not go around the inner city. They must fan out through Midtown where people live. There are 10 inbound buses. That means this is truly possible. This can be done. I've reached out to Caddo without much luck, so I'm bringing this issue to your attention today. Thank you. Thank you, and your letter um, has been given to the clerk that will be on the agenda for the next council meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Our next speaker is Loretta Stanaway and then Daniel K. Arnold. I'm happy to announce that the uh, city courtesy office at 1709 East Mount Hope Avenue, the former city cemetery office, opened today as planned under the auspices of volunteers working on behalf of the Friends of Lansing's Historic Cemeteries. So we are restoring the services to that location. You can conduct any business there that you would have conducted previously with the exception of the actual sale of a cemetery lot or a columbarium niche. So if you have questions or needs or concerns or want to know anything about the cemeteries that we can help you with, we're there, we're willing and happy to help. We'll announce a phone number soon. We don't have a phone in there as yet, but that's in the works. Um, and the other thing I wanted to do was, uh, she stepped out, I hope she can, uh, is gonna step back in. But I wanted to thank Councilwoman Jody Washington for her many years of service. She served with honor and distinction and integrity. I know she worked very hard and diligently, many, many, many hours every week on the public's needs and uh, I think she did a phenomenal job and she will be missed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Daniel K. Arnold and then Deborah Mulcahy. Hi. Greetings, City of Lansing and those who care. 
I'm pleased to see the level of loving mercy on the poor demonstrated by many this past holiday season. Uh, there were many free Thanksgiving dinners provided without question by a Crossroads Church, Friendship Baptist, Epicenter, Worship, Salvation Army, City Rescue Mission, and The Fledge. I was pleased to see Mayor Andy Shore helping to serve a meal and to learn about his hat and glove drive. Thank you, Mayor Shore. Uh, I enjoyed attending LCC's free play about homelessness and know about the continued food outreach in the park by Punks with Lunch, Homeless Angels, and Cardboard Profits. These were some of the many efforts made to help the needy have a happy holiday season. This coming Christmas, I'm aware of Holy Cross's upcoming Christmas celebration on the 20th, and I'm encouraging everyone to continue this giving spirit into a new decade. Let us continue thoughts and actions on providing warming centers and just doing our individual parts to love others who can be invisible. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. And our final speaker of the year is Deborah Mulcahy. <laughs> <laughs> of the year? Um, Deborah Mulcahy, South Genesee Drive. Um, I have a holiday wish list, and it's pretty simple. Um, the comments have made tonight in reference to sustainability, and a, a person spoke earlier this evening. Um, it's something that's personally near and dear to my heart, and I wish it was near and dear to everybody's heart. And we all can step back and look at what we can do differently and how we can be better stewards of our earth. And in line with the woman who spoke here about the buses, um, we need to look in our city at a way to have people, people be able to move more easily through our community. We all get older if we're lucky. And as we get older, we have different needs. And everyone's not always able to afford or be able to just jump in a car and drive somewhere. So that's one of my wishes that we look in reference to sustainability and accessibility for all. Um, the other thing is, I'd like to know who's who and how to contact them in the city. The police department had publicly has a list of the employees' names with their phone numbers and their emails. The city of Lansing employees, that doesn't exist. Maybe for you, city council people, you have it available to you. But those of us in the public, is not existing. I spoke with Mark Lawrence of the mayor's office a year ago about this. He was shocked. He didn't believe me. Oh, you're right. I'd like to see that. The third thing is, I'd really wish you'd do something with the bloody carts that are all over our town. It's not an issue of visibility, the garbage, the recycling, depending on who's garbage, Grange or whatever. Visibility, when you're driving in and out of a driveway, when you're walking somewhere, I cannot plant a tree in my city right away without getting a permit, but those containers sit there in violation of ordinance, but they sit there and they continue to sit there. I spoke on December 5th at um, Public Safety Committee. Scott Sanford sat there, the public director sat there, or whatever he is of planning and all. I mentioned the particular areas. Those containers are still sitting there weeks later. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. Uh, we want to remind people that we will not have any other council meetings until the January 6th, which will be a committee of a whole electing leadership and then a council meeting following that. So with that, we are adjourned for the year. Thank you.